Hi everyone! In the previous video, we presented an overview of the basic steps in applying a population of 3D objects to a terrain. In this video, we'll provide an overview of the shader setups used to create the masks which identify key features of the terrain in our shot. Using masks gives us the ability to isolate parts of the terrain for further manipulation, such as displacement, texturing, or populating an area with 3D objects. Be sure to check out the links in the description below for even more detailed tutorials on creating masks. For this video, we've added a surface layer shader to the shaders group and enabled its test color so that we could visualize the mask we've created for the shot by assigning them to the mask by shader field. During the process of creating the terrain, we identified certain landmarks of the landscape, such as the volcano, the lava flow area, even potential rock slide areas, to name just a few that would require special consideration when it came to texturing or applying populations to these areas. We began to isolate these areas using Terrigen's Simple Shape Shader. The Simple Shape Shader is a very powerful tool that can be used to quickly create masks in a variety of shapes and gradations. Since the shape of the volcano is circular, we chose the circle slash ellipse as the type of shape, then positioned and scaled it using the position and size parameters. To create a soft edge to the mask, we set the edge profile to bevel, the edge width value to 15, and the edge units to percentage. This mask will have multiple uses. First, we'll be able to keep the forest populations from growing up the volcano, and in later videos, we'll use it to apply rock-like textures to this part of the terrain. When we needed to create a mask in an irregular shape, such as the volcano's lava flow area, we used the painted shader. The Painted Shader tools allow you to create a mask using brushes of different sizes, colors, and densities, much like a paint program. The Painted Shader mask for the Volcano Lava Flow has a similar purpose as the Simple Shape Shader for the volcano, to allow us to independently texture that part of the terrain, and to keep the forest populations from growing there. Both these shaders can be combined into one via the Merge node. The Merge node allows us to combine the inputs in a variety of mathematical combinations. In this case, we need to add the two masks together. So under the Merge Mode tab, set the Color Merge Mode to Add. And under the Mix Control tab, set the Mix to A value to 1. The Mix to A value determines how much the shader assigned to the shader A input is added to the shader assigned to the main input. A value of 1.0 means 100% of shader A is added together with the main input. In a similar fashion, we used a painted shader to create a mask for potential rock slide areas and combined this mask with the other two. We also used a painted shader to create a mask to cover all the terrain that is hidden by the cloud cover or not seen from the camera's point of view. These areas do not need to be populated with trees and vegetation because we will never see them, and this will greatly reduce the number of instances generated by the population process. This mask can also be combined with the other masks in exactly the same way as previously described to keep the forest populations from growing in these areas. Often in nature, the topography of the terrain affects the types of vegetation growing in specific areas. For example, the slope of a granite mountainside might be devoid of trees because there is no soil for them to get a foothold. Likewise, grasses might grow on the flat and bare expanses of a meadow, but not necessarily in the steeper ravines or clefts that have been worn away by erosion. We created a special kind of mass to help distinguish between these local rises and falls in the landscape features. This mask subtracts a Get Altitude and Texture function node from a Get Altitude function node to determine if a point on the terrain is higher or lower than the smooth version of the terrain that was recorded at the last Compute Terrain node. The result is then passed to the main input of a Color Adjust shader, where it can be fine-tuned by shifting the white and black levels to create very naturalistic-looking masks. One way in which we will use this mask is to keep the forest trees from growing within the crevices. And like the other masks we've created so far, the output of this mask can be combined with the output of the other masks. In creating the look of the Pacific Northwest terrain, we wanted to establish an evergreen forest in the upper elevations of the terrain and deciduous trees in the lower valley areas. To achieve this result, we used a series of distribution shaders to define eight important elevation zones for our shot. 
the evergreen upper zone 1, the evergreen lower zone 1, the evergreen upper zone 2, the evergreen lower zone 2, the deciduous upper zone 1, the deciduous lower zone 1, the deciduous upper zone 2, and finally, the deciduous lower zone 2. These zones took into consideration the elevation and slopes of the terrain, and also how each zone would interact or blend into each other. We also defined an overall fractal noise pattern that covered the entire terrain using a power fractal shader. This allows us to further subdivide the zones by using the fractal noise pattern as a mask. In effect, this gives us twice as many regions that we can populate with different species of trees and vegetation if we wish. Defining these individual masks gives us the flexibility to combine them in whichever way best suits our needs. For example, we have the ability to create a mask that would limit a population of evergreen trees to the upper evergreen elevation zone, but not along the volcano and lava flow areas, and only along the crest of the mountain slopes, not in the depression areas. As we've seen in this video, Terrigen has many tools available to create specific masks that we can then combine together as needed to isolate features of the terrain. In the videos that follow, we'll use these masks to texture the landscape and populate it with trees and shrubs. We hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching. 